Valerie Castro. Sarah Nelson joins me now, president of the Association of Flight Attendants, which represents about 50,000 flight attendants. Sarah, it's good to see you. I'm just curious your reaction. Do you think that the self-defense training should be mandatory? Absolutely. We've been working on making this program mandatory since just after September 11th when it was created. And it needs to be uh, provided in our regular training so that all flight attendants can receive it at their paid company training with oversight from the TSA. And there needs to be recurrent training as well because as you saw in that video, you can be in a state of shock when you are presented with this and you have to be able to respond in something that you're very trained to do with an immediate response and that takes repetitive training so this training is fantastic i have been through it it gives flight attendants confidence it allows us to know how to stand and it is specific to our workplace and this and the workplace that we work in to try to protect the cockpit the other passengers and ourselves when you look at this spike in Omicron variant across the nation, how much are you looking at this as a new stressor along with the crowded planes that we're seeing for the holiday season and thinking there's a reason to be concerned over the next couple weeks? Well, it's really concerning because crew members are on the front lines and they are very likely to come in contact with Omicron, which also means that they may have to uh, isolate and not be able to go to work and that will put a stress and strain on staffing as well uh, which can also lead to operational disruptions and that can uh, also create uh, high temperatures in the airport that lead to more disruptive passengers so it's it it all is very concerning to us not only for our health but also the conditions at work and also, if this becomes just out of hand, that can have an economic impact on us as well. And yesterday, we heard that Delta's CEO asked the CDC to roll back some of those quarantine requirements for breakthrough cases because staffing is a problem. What do you think of that? Well, I think that that is the wrong move, and it's the wrong message to send to the country at this time. Uh, the fact of the matter is that when flight attendants are testing negative and they feel better, they can get back to work. But what this may do is it may put flight attendants in a position of being forced to come back before they feel better. Mm. And that can raise tensions as well. Imagine someone coming back who's still coughing, who's still expressing symptoms, even if they're testing negative. So there's a, a real negative side to this, and we're not happy about Delta's move to ask for this, and we think it's the wrong way to go. Sarah Nelson, we appreciate your time. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. The